You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Now I am pleased to say we are joined by some newcomers here to our election night spectacular. First, since we're already beaming in to New Hampshire, let's go a one state adjacent over there to the land of Maine, where we are joined from his palatial compound by none other than the rock lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com by way of Carmen Line Capital. Mr. G, welcome to our mega spectacular election night special, sir. It is a pleasure to be here. I just, I just hope I have the mute. I don't have the. I've got my mute button control on full, on full auto tonight, so I can. Uh, well, don't so worry. You're in good company. You're joined here by a bunch of others, including Mr. Sean Smith from Footsie Russell, who we have discovered is a genius on mute. He is like you. His most pith, his most pithy <laughs> comments come on mute. <laughs> so. He hits the button. Beware of the witticisms of the mute button, and also joining us. From the short vol show, uh, Mr. Dave Lincoln. Mr. Lincoln, welcome to our election night spectacular, sir. Thanks. It's great to be here. I'm coming to you from lovely Cape Cod, Massachusetts, home of the Pilgrims. Home of the Pilgrims, indeed. All right, they're calling some more states now here. Some of these not exactly surprising. Uh, your stomping grounds right now, Dave. Massachusetts going in the Biden camp. Not surprising. Connecticut also going in the Biden camp. Not exactly surprising. Two reliably blue states there. Uh, New Jersey also in the Biden camp. Also not exactly surprising. Delaware probably the least surprising of that bunch. Uh, Maryland and, of course, like I mentioned, the second the polls closed, they called us Illinois for Biden. So those all going in the Biden camp. Trump had Tennessee and Oklahoma, Missouri, and Alabama. So uh, some interesting totals. Looks like right now we've got Biden in the lead with 30 electoral votes, followed by Trump with 18. Let's see really quickly if we're seeing some of this impact, what's going on. Yes, we were just talking earlier uh, when Dan was just talking how we were flirting with 3,400 in the S&P, how that looks like a bit of a ceiling out there, some resistance in the near term. That certainly has proved prescient because we have come off that now pretty aggressively. Down almost about 30-odd handles from where we were not too long ago. We got about a 33 55 or so right now. That puts us, oh, about 14 handles below where the S&P closed. So a lot to break down. Let's go to our newest additions. Let's start with the rockingest of lobsters, sir. What is lighting up your tape? What's Volman been up to on this very volatile day, sir? Um, I, I added only small, like, kind of uh, sort of nutbaggy positions, you know, as in, like, big moves. I think, you know... Big moves out to December, not a lot of uh, short term, like I would say one week or less type stuff. Um, another thing, okay, I just have general election question. How can they call Virginia with like 1% of the vote? How, how do they do that so fast? <laughs> ah, the polling math. Like, is it exit polls or are they just, you know, like, is polling man out there and polling man says, there's no shot in this state. They asked one guy. They said, okay, we call it. We're good. And then we're calling them up. So I, you got that. You, you know, yeah, like they closed the polls. New Jersey, it's a lock. So, I mean, I, under, I understand all that. They're, the states are reliably, you know, one call or the other. But um, I wonder if, because it's 2020, if there will be one of those. They call the state, yet somehow 
They're wrong. Yeah, they have to uncall it. <laughs> they have to uncall the As you recall, they did call Florida back in Bush Gore ever so briefly, right? Then they had to uncall it. I was going to say, and yeah. they had to uncall it. And there was a lot of egg on people's faces. Yeah. You know, I, I know there's a lot of states that, that just, you know, like California or whatever, New Jersey. And, you know, they used to swing both ways way back, you know, no pun intended, way back in the 80s and 90s, they would swing both ways. But, um, you know, not in the last 10, 15, 20 years or so. Uh, of course, I date myself as usual. But um, I think the interesting, you know, as far as market goes, I, I, I think the reality is there was a lot of uncertainty, a lot of press around the election. And I think the fact that it'll just be over will be a relief. How much of a relief? You know, what does that equate to? Maybe 25 VIX in a, in a week or so, maybe. Um, because that's kind of where we were. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, you're going to see, I think that's going to be the biggest thing is the fact that it's just kind of over. And then, you know, they'll do the fight out in the courts or whatever, whatever happens to happen. Um, you know, because we had, amazingly, we had a peaceful election. What? Do, how many peaceful elections have the United States have in a row? Uh, what are we on now? Uh, 240 years it's a good of streak. peaceful elections. <laughs> so, shock. I know everybody was freaked out, but it happened again. It happened again. Let's so, hope. Let's hope. So far, yesterday, I was walking around the loop here outside the studios in downtown Chicago, and it did seem like they were preparing for a war zone. Just about every major chain store, or even small little mom and pop, you know, bodegas on the corner, they were all completely boarded up. Police were out in force. So they were preparing for a bit of a May June redux. Let's hope we don't see that, listeners. We, of course, had. National Guard Humvees right outside the door to our studio here. So it was certainly, a, shall we say, an interesting time in, uh, in, in Chicago history. Let's hope there's not a repeat of that. <laughs> All right. I know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Matt, you have to hop off before you run uh, really quickly, sir. Any last nuggets you want to leave with our audience out here? You, the, so far, the first daring one to make a prediction. Are, are you staying with that A? And any other nuggets you want to leave our audience with, sir? No, I think you're in good hands. You got the uh, Andrew is uh, up there in Maine, right next door, and and now David's down in Cape Cod. So uh, you know, I'm going to sign off. Hold on. What was the prediction? Oh, I, I want the Orange Man, uh, and we'll know tonight. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, he called it for Trump very early, before any polls were in. I, you know what though, I traded in a pit with Matt for a long time. I'll just say he does. He does have a little bit of prognostication ability. You don't. You don't start a company, trade options, and have a massive floor presence, screwing up a lot. I'm just saying. I'm just right saying. Back, right back at you, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys are in good hands with Andrew. With we don't call him the Oracle of New Hampshire for nothing. Yeah, just, you know. And now he just he hangs out in his man, uh, New Hampshire compound. By the way, which is much cheesier than me. New Hampshire, much shishier than me. Much shishier. They have Lake Winnipesaukee, very shishi there. Yeah. Very shishi. All right, guys, have a great show. We'll be listening in. Take, Take care, care, man. Let us know how your, how your wife updates the electoral map for us. I'm looking forward to hearing that. Dave, obviously you hang out on the dark side of volatility, on the short side of volatility. What's been lighting up your tape going into this? Obviously that side has been okay for outside of a few days last week. We had just a tremendous vol crush to bore another one of your titles. They really came for this vol pretty early. What's been lighting up your tape? Were you surprised how aggressively they came for this vol so early? And what are your thoughts here heading into the big day, sir? Well, I've been doing a little survey of... Uh, just an empirical survey of of some uh, professionals around me, and I'm surprised to note that there are a number of individuals who are actually long volatility right here who are professional traders. So we'll see how that works out. I uh, was swinging stuff around trying to make a decision, but I ended up coming into tonight mostly in cash, which means that I would be very excited if we did get some sort of volatility event, although... It's, it's hard to tell what's going to happen. I mean, the, the term structure is all uh, crazy right now. And so um, we need a down move to get things back into line. But um, I, I've basically, I'm flat right now. I was, I was playing to the short side for a little while. It came in so much in the last day or two that I took it off 
and am reloaded. So we'll see what happens going into tomorrow. We will see indeed. And Mr. Rock Lobster, I know your crazies out there like to sling a little bit of vol. What have they been up to in the pitch chat and the vol newsletter of late, sir? Um, we, uh, so right now I would say I'm leaning short with some gamma, which would mean to the listeners that I have, I have more short vol contracts, and I don't like sell uh, naked short vol contracts because I'm too old at this point. Maybe when I was younger, I <laughs> sold a lot of contracts, but when I'm older, I'm like, I don't want to make that money back again. So I mostly just look at contracts that I can buy that has some leverage. Um, and I think on, on balance, uh, in the pit chat, there is a uh, short vol bias. Um, the biggest thing is uh, was the you know how long. Um, so that's a lot of trading vol. You know, is it a no six cycle, no thirteen cycle? I think the no six cycle is a tougher short vol trade, um, just because some votes could come in in the next three. So there's that possibility. Um, I think no thirteen, and I kind of agree with I do do agree with Matt. We'll know by no thirteen. Um, one way or another, I don't think we're going to have the hanging chat and all that crap episode like we had the other time. Um, we've had 20 years to kind of get that together. Um, I mean, I see Maine's, if, if Maine, a backwater, can have pretty efficient um, uh, voting apparatus in place, uh, I think Florida probably has it figured out by now. I don't know. I saw those hanging Chad videos from 2000. You think they've, uh, they've progressed a lot <laughs> since then? <laughs> well, you know what's funny is you take a black pen – you put it on a hard piece of cardboard, you slide it in the box, the machine reads the box, and you got a you got a Democratic person and a Republican person picking up the ballot and sticking it in the box, and then it's recorded. Like I, I don't know how the Russians could mess with that, you know, unless they've been infiltrating, you know, infiltrating the uh <laughs> the main for the last fifty years, you know, they've got the Russian Democrat and Russian Republican there somehow kicking the box, you know, when the ballot goes in. I, I'm just saying it it's hard to mess with a simple process. So I, I think a lot of things sometimes, you know, we, we say on the show a lot with an option trade, you know, to so keep it simple, right? Don't make it don't make it so hard that you can't figure it out. Put the ballot in the box, the little box goes ding and it's over. I don't think there's anything complicated about voting. I don't think it's necessary for that. Um, so I, I think that's uh, as far as, but from a vol point of view, leaning a little short because, you know, we have had that, what I would call that, you know, when you have earnings in a stock, what happens is the liquidity provider, the market in general, kinds of gets an idea, you know, and, and, and uh, Dewey can uh, talk about this because that's what we called Dewey when he was floor trader. Um, but you, you're going to get that straddle price, and it's not going to move. It's going to stay within maybe a buck, two bucks of some sort of range. Um, and the reality is, this is the no six, no four straddle was is going to be pretty expensive. You know, fourteen, eighteen dollars for one two day move. So. That, that part of the curve kicks up very steeply. It's a very high vol, and that will create the backwardated uh, volatility in the S&P 500, and then the futures will be the forward vol mirror of that. Um, and, you get, and you get the pricing that we have. Um, and it's going to be hard for the vol to maintain that once some news is out. Um, and, you know, and we see it over different elections. Uh, we've seen some sell-offs and stuff like that. But rarely do we get kind of the vol peak that we saw running up to the election, um, possibly, you know, later in the cycle. But, you know, this is one time where a lot of the vol is kind of baked in. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to have more crappy news than we've had in 2020. COVID, economic decline, you know, all kinds of political strife. So it doesn't mean that vol can't go higher. I just think it's going to be tougher for it to go higher after the election. So I would say, you know, Dewey, you can weigh in here longer on this, but that's been the consensus of all the, you know, the crazies in the pit chat. We don't know how low, I don't know, I'm guessing maybe 25 next week would be my guess, but Volman hasn't stuck anything on Twitter yet, but I, that would be my, that would be kind of my 
my short term low, I think, is possible. <laughs> I like that. Uh, yeah, you know, it's interesting. I've been I've been tallying up here while you were talking, Mr. Rocklass. By the way, you answered one of my questions I was just going to put to you. You said you don't think we're going to have a, a know who it is, at least until I think you said a little bit later here in November, a little bit later in the week. We have a poll going on that right now with our audience. Will we know who the victor is tonight? Yes or no? And it keeps fluctuating, but it hovers right around 50-50. So our audience is, is clearly, clearly split, not quite as certain as our Oracle of Omaha, or I should say Oracle of New Hampshire friend, <laughs> is out there. Yes, definitely 48.1% right now. No, it'll take days, 44.4%, and about 7.4% saying, I don't know. Revon George Gorges chiming in on our poll saying, a Donald Trump win. So it'll be a big gain in stocks, talking the Dow plus 1,300. Oh, that'd be a big move. And then we've got uh, Tanny9 here in the chat. He says, super fan here. Wrapping up Crypto Rundown in the right ear and this fine program in the left. <laughs> well done. If I had a cap on Tanny9, I would tip it to you. You are indeed a super fan. If you're doing two shows at once, then you certainly qualify as a super fan. And let's see how the numbers are holding up. It's interesting right now. I'm looking at a bunch of different sources at once because obviously you don't want to get any of that electoral bias in there, or political bias. So looking at a bunch of different venues. Ironically, CNN being one of the more conservative right now. They're only calling it 30 to 26 in favor of Biden. Some of the other sources like the AP and even what Google is pulling in are calling it a little bit broader. They're saying 85 to 55 for Biden. They're giving Biden Vermont, Virginia, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Illinois, and Rhode Island. And Trump with 55. They're giving Kentucky, West Virginia, South Carolina, Tennessee, Oklahoma, Mississippi, and Alabama. And all of this is kind of keeping futures back near where they were not too long ago. That about 33, 58 right now. So they ticked up a little bit since the last time we chatted, but still well below where we just were when Dan was talking about maybe starting to threaten that 3,400 level. All right, a lot on the table there. So, uh, Mr. Dave A., let's start with you. Do you think we're going to have a certain outcome tonight? I think it'll take a little bit longer. And then, B., what do you have to say with everything Mr. Rock Lobster threw at you, sir? Well, I I think we're going to get some decision. I'm, I'm going to split hairs a little bit here and say I think we're going to get some decision by midday tomorrow. I don't know. I think everybody wants to be careful this time because, remember, last time everybody called it wrong, and they don't want to do that again, so they're trying to be careful. So in a situation where any other election they would have called it, in this election, they're going to wait that extra hour or two hours or whatever because they don't want to mess it up again, A, and B, they know that there's like a lot of uh, litigiousness or litigy or whatever the word is for people getting ready to sue. So they're very careful. I think they're going to be very careful this time about calling it ahead of time. I was just thinking back, uh, where was volatility in 2016? It was way lower than it is now. I think it was maybe around a 18. I, I can't remember exactly, but it, 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 it seems to me that it was a shock last election when uh, Donald Trump won the election. It might have been a shock even to him, but it was a shock to the system. When we saw a tremendous volatility overnight in the futures, remember there was a huge sell-off and rally. It was going all over the place. I don't think any outcome we can get this year will be as much of a shock as that outcome was last time. I think all the alternatives this year uh, will add certainty to the marketplace, even if it's tied it still adds some sort of um we know a little bit more about what's happening and that tends to uh deflate vol so i certainly see vol coming in i don't know when it's going to come in if it's going to come in you know we come in tomorrow and it's down below 30 the vix or it takes a few days but it, it definitely is going to revert back towards the mean remember the mean and the vix is down around the 20 level so um so th that's kind of my thoughts on that. And as far as the election being called, I think it will be we'll know by like about noon tomorrow. So if you I don't know which category that fits into, but that's kind of where I, I sit. That with would it. be a no for tonight then. But interesting stuff. You asked about where the ball was this time four years ago. I happened to have that right in front of me here. Let's look at through the lens of the E mini. Of course, that's a product. I know a lot of you like to trade heading into the election in 2016. The E mini vol was 
obviously much lower than it is right now. It was hovering between 10 and 15% from September going into October leading into that big uh, event. Obviously, this year, much higher. And you can obviously extrapolate a similar level out there for VIX compared to the straight-up 30-day implied of the E-mini. Going to be a similar ballpark to VIX. Obviously, VIX plays a little bit with the skew there as well. Now, obviously, this year, uh, we saw numbers way up into the 25% and threatening 40 on VIX land not too long ago. So a little bit different volatility regime right now <laughs> this year as it was four years ago. Also, you talk about that reaction we saw this time four years ago. Yeah, it was pretty aggressive. The S&P sold off. Everyone talks about the big point total in the Dow because it sounds cool, makes good headlines. But everyone mostly watches the S&P. And it sold off about 6% in the evening. I'm looking at the graph right here. It sold off. And then it pretty much bottomed out <laughs> right around midnight or so and started turning around. And by the middle of the next trading session, it had regained all of those losses, and by the end of the day, it was back up. It was right around 21 half when uh, it started selling off uh, aggressively, and by the end of the next day, on the 9th, it was north of that. It was like about 21, looks like 70 odd or something like that. So a lot to unpack. Dan, I know you were probably slinging a lot of futures hot and heavy back four years ago. What do you recall, A, about four years ago from a vol perspective and the movement out there versus right now, and then B, do you have anything to add to what uh, the Rock Lobster and Mr. Short Vol were saying on the volatility front, sir? No, I think those are good assessments of what we could be seeing. And what we had four years ago, if I remember correctly, um, we had an orderly market until about 8 o'clock at night. And actually, we had exit polls. It showed Clinton was going to win. We saw the, market, the stock market drop. And then a few hours later, they are actually right after that, they said, you know something? We're not really sure about those exit polls. And then the market went sideways for a bit. Later in the evening, which would be nice if we could have this tonight, uh, about 8 o'clock our time, uh, we saw the market started to rally when it looked like Trump might win. For whatever reason, the stock market seemed to like that. Uh, so that that kick in volatility that we saw occurred late, and when we also saw it in Europe, it didn't necessarily continue. I happened to be teaching a course in Poland uh, during that election. I voted before I left, and um, it was interesting to see that. I was really surprised to see that kick in volatility. I thought it was kind of over, and uh, – but we didn't see strong follow through immediately. We went sideways for a bit, and then it caught momentum again after that. So I don't know if we're going to get that same kind of movement that we're looking for here this time around, uh, because there's enough uncertainty out there. Like you were mentioning that 3,400 in the S&P as we came near it. Uh, so far, we backed off a bit. So the market, I think, is right now just catching its breath. Uh, it needs an excuse to do something, and I just don't think it has enough yet to do that. But my hope, I guess, from my point of view, would be to see some strength in these indices before the end of the evening, European time now, uh, before the European session opens, and uh, see interest rates back off a bit and see gold silver maybe even get a little bit stronger so it's it's uh it's very interesting in terms of what we're seeing now compared to what we saw previously we're not really seeing that directional bias that uh, we saw a few years ago yeah you know what mr sean i think i'm in the mood for another bit of presidential trivia what do you got for us sir you know but before i do that i just wanted to uh, agree with dan on on several of his points and you know we're, we're right down the middle um, looking at all the, these election results and, you know, it's just so close. I think we need something to move the market, as Dan said. Um, but as, as we said earlier in the night with the rally, um, it, 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 it seems like their investors are not voting with their portfolios, but they're going past the election. You know, it just, it's just really interesting to see. Um, all right. Presidential 
uh, trivia. The, lo- the last question was really interesting, right? Two presidents died on the exact same day in 1826, July 4th, that being John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. Who else? What other president died on the 4th of July? Ooh, I knew those other two. Hmm. This now is a, this is a bit of a stumper. Anyone out there know the answer to this one? Mr. Rock Lobster, Mr. Shortball, Dan, this one come to mind? No. Yeah. No. Give us I a hint. I heard the other two as well. But. <laughs> Give us a hint, Sean. Uh, he was uh, one, one of the top, or one of the first ten presidents. How about that for a, for a, a hint? Oh, first ten. ten presidents. One of the first ten, correct. Uh, well, who was John Adams' son? John Quincy Adams. I'll go with Ooh. that. Ooh, that's a good hey, one. Hey, that's a good one. Ooh, that's a I think good Andrew guess. Jackson makes the cutoff for uh, first ten. I'm going to go with him. Um, Dave, you have a guess? Did you, uh, I, I cheated and, and Googled it, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> At least uh, you're honest. It's, it's James Madison. James oh. Madison died. Oh. Oh. Hey, he I've got a little four. tidbit about Andrew. Number Who four. said Andrew Jackson? I said Andrew Jackson. Uh, here's a trivia uh, bit on Andrew Jackson. You know, Andrew Jackson was shot in the chest during a gun duel, but managed to stay standing and shot and killed his opponent. The bullet would not be removed uh, safely from his chest, and he died with it in his chest 40 years later. He was a hardcore guy. They didn't call him Old Hickory for Dang. nothing. <laughs> Bullets didn't even take him down. Yeah, he may have had some controversial views compared to his acceptable now, but uh, just from a pure toughness perspective, you can't, you can't take it away from that guy. That guy was, was hard as – they don't make him that hard anymore imagine just getting shot in the chest you still fight you win the duel and you keep the bullet in 40 years later didn't he attack someone in congress too i think the guy was just a savage uh, by pretty much any way uh, any way you break it down speaking of savages our audience certainly are a bunch of good savages savages in the best up uh, next we have uh in the live chat Ju- juinator saying uh jurinator jurinator saying superb show Getting so much inspiration from it. I am in Lisbon, Portugal. It is late here, 1.25 a.m., and you're keeping me up. Well, I apologize for that. Hopefully, we are rewarding you with some good content. Sounds like we are. He says, oh, also, try and get a soothing female voice into the mix soon. (laughs) Always good to have a female perspective also. We'll see if we can work some into the mix. I don't know, uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, can you do a soothing female voice here for Mr. Jurinator, sir? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, I can't. But we, we do have an excellent person at Option Pit, Lisa Leslie, who was a compadre on the CBOE floor. She has a, let's just say she has a, a, a mellifluous uh, south side or west side Chicago twang to her voice. Quite, quite distinct for anybody that knows any women from the southwest side of Chicago. <laughs> there you go. Well, we don't have any ladies coming up right now, but we do have some more special guests coming up at the turn of the dial there, the turn of the half. I'm glad to see you folks in Lisbon are paying attention. Obviously, we, you know, we have a lot of a domestic audience, and this is a big deal for us here domestically, but it's a big deal around the world. And certainly, if you're trading and looking at these markets, this is going to impact you, whether you're trading indices, whether you're trading commodities, FX, whatever the heck you're trading out there. This is a big event. So I'm glad to see our international audience are staying up with us. You guys, you guys are hardcore out there. Let's see what next polls we're going to go out to here. What's closing next as I welcome on soon our next slew of guests. What is closing here at 7.30? That seems like 7.30, the only poll closing here at 7.30 Central Time is Arkansas with a whopping six electoral votes out there. So uh, interesting stuff all the way around here. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider.
Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. <laughs>